Hello. I didn't say hello everyone this time. I just said hello. So, um, I've been doing some more research on the Xbox One, and I thought I'd just talk about it a little bit, um, a little bit more. I wanted to, I just wanted to, um, talk about a few things that people probably aren't aware of because they're so distracted by the, by the, uh, restrictions the Xbox One carries. And... It's just, I just figured maybe there's more to it than meets the eye, and, um, I do want to do another uh, vlog on the PS4. You know what, I might just conjoin it on here. That was a decision I made right now, live, as I recorded it. So yeah, I want to do a follow-up on the two next-gen consoles. Um, let's start with the Xbox One, because, yeah, that's what I was originally going to do. Um... The, and there's less, to, there's more to say about the Xbox One. Apparently, there's some few. Th I, I'm starting to understand the concept of why Microsoft wants to make this console, why they made the decisions they made, and it was described by uh, some big people in Microsoft as the future, moving forward in gaming, and um, honestly, well, let me talk about some things first. Um. They had a thing called the family plan, which is kind of interesting. You, um, how it works is you will um, have a family plan with ten family members with your Xbox One, and every game you download, you can send to another Xbox One. As it's it's kind of like a, a digital library where if you can access it, you can use them one at a time. It's, um, that's how it's described um, by Microsoft, and. Um, it's kind of an interesting idea. Let's say you're uh, you have a cousin who's on this family plan that lives in a different uh, city or state. You can say um, you want to play this game. I just bought it, and you say sure, and you just keep passing it by. Um, as far as I know, you can't play them at the exact same time, but you know, it's an interesting concept. Um, something that uh, something that I wouldn't mind other games do with uh, downloads, uh, provided. I don't know, it's kind of a tricky, it's like, it's kind of a touchy situation. Like, the concept's a good idea, but it's just complicated. And you know, with that statement, that is the Xbox One in general. The concepts are pretty interesting, but it's the, um, but it's the restrictions that complicate them. Like the fact that you can't buy used, ga you can't share used games, you can't sell used games, you can't, um... You, you can't be offline. Like, these are all things that are restrictions because the concepts were... It's, it's kind of complicated, but I always... But the, the thing is, you have to understand that throughout history, it's been proven. When you try to push forward, whatever that means to you, uh, when you try to push forward and get ahead of the game, you're losing a gap there, and then everything's going to fall apart. Because not only is society used to it, but at the same time, you're going to have to adjust a lot of rules and restrictions to make sure this forward movement works without people getting used to it, or without um, people, or without considering people even want it. It's like Jurassic Park, if I may quote. Um, they've spent so much time focusing if they could, they didn't think about if they should. That is the Xbox One. Um... And it, and it seems like something they're going for. The Microsoft believes that the future of gaming is all digital, all on the console, like Steam. And a lot of gamers would disagree. They want the actual physical copy, and the option is very nice to have digital copy. I just bought a, a digital copy of Animal Crossing, and um, I would would have mined the collector's value, but, you know, and besides, um, with that in mind, the, the 360 isn't pulling over to the Xbox One, what's going to happen when the next Xbox comes out? You're going to have all those downloads that you can't, most likely can't trade over, especially with uh, memory capabilities, which, in fairness, will probably switch off, but you see, this is where it gets complicated. You're, pre you're trying to, you're trying to pretend you know what the future is. You're trying to pretend it's like you think you know exactly what the future is, and then it gets complicated, because nobody knows what the future is. you got to live in the here and now, you know? And that's something the Wii U and the PS4 are good at. They 
consider what is what what can we do to improve this for the consumer that they want here and now. It doesn't have to get fuzzy. It doesn't get complicated. We just got to give them. We don't. We like. We can't give them something that'll hurt us as a business. But at the same time, it'd be nice to satisfy the customer. And Xbox One just doesn't think about the customer because um, I'm not exactly sure on the statistic, but there's a very large percentage of the world that don't have internet connection still. And granted, most of those have never seen a video game before, but there's a good percentage of that where they are gamers that can't play online. And the fact that you can't play offline is kind of unfair. Now, they have said the fact that you can actually connect your Xbox One to your phone as a router. Problem. Your phone's going to be out sometimes. I mean, you have to check in with the internet every day, but I guess it doesn't have to be off all the time. I guess it can be off some of the time. You just have to play games online. But some people don't have phones either. Some people can't afford phones with the internet. You know, the demo and the fact that it's a $600 console, the demographic here is getting higher and higher to the rich only. And I'm sure even the rich don't want a console that owns them. I've been saying that for a while now because of my feelings on the Xbox One. I've been saying basically it's not about preference anymore. It's about common sense. And um, the always co X, uh, connect uh, the connect always connected. Again, you know the connect is an interesting concept with the uh, with the uh, movement peripheral and the voice activation and whatnot. It's a good concept. It's very interesting. And it is, it just seems pretty much you see in a sci-fi uh, movie or a future thing, but saying, um, you turn on, turn to this channel, but then you have complications. And let's take that and the fact that everything's cloud, everything is digital. Let's take those two factors and realize that how are you going to stop this, uh, people from stealing, from pirating, from uh, sharing uh, for free, and that's where all these restrictions come from. That's how you make the future work. That is just my I. That's just what I've been thinking lately since I've been I've been watching a lot of interviews from actual Microsoft people, and I just wanted to get it clear in my head. What? Why? Why did they make the decision? And I can respect that they really believe this will work. And honestly, they should really look at the gaming history books. The Dreamcast failed for that same reason, and so did the Atari Jaguar. Both of these consoles leapt to uh, leapt very far in technology in very quick time. Even the PS3's launch was was kind of failed the first day because they had really shoddy Blu-ray, and all these Blu-rays blew out. I remember it was um, opening day. It was two days before the Wii, uh, and the three and there was big news. The, all the three six the many three sixties. PS3s broke down because the Blu-rays were, were blowing out. I remember, and I remember uh, there was a story where someone bought a PS3 like a day after on eBay for a working one for a hundred thousand dollars. And I, uh, wow, I don't know why they couldn't just wait for the delay, but you know you gotta respect the fan, the, those die-hard fans, you know. And they just gotta look at that. But I think we have a good segue to PS4 now. Um. The PS4 is a very solid console, you know, it's just PS3 with some improvements. Very fair, they were very fair. I, I feel like that they, they um, their pri the price will be a loss to them, but the fact that they knew, they just knew that they'll get a lot of Microsoft fans, it'll even out to me, because they'll make the, the money they would have expected if they made it $500, which still wouldn't have been that bad, considering the Xbox One would still been more expensive. Everyone thought the PS4 was going to be 500 or uh, 550 or whatever. But the, you know what? They took a plunge said, you know what? We're going to get a huge demographic uh, from uh, Microsoft anyway, so let's lower the price a lot. And I'm, I'm sure they were intending on making the price that low because after what happened with the PS3. They're, they're really doing a good job, and they're really fixing things they that consumers weren't happy with. Now, um... A lot of people disagree with the backwards compatibility, but you know what? Um, it's it's just it gets complicated after a while. If you're gonna up the technology to make sure it lasts a few years um, until your next console, you gotta make sure that it's ready. You know, you can't have too many hardware problems and whatnot. 
So that's that. Um, PlayStation Plus is now a standard. You have to buy it. Perfectly fair, and many people I've talked to agree with me on that. It's perfectly fair. You know, like, uh, people have been complaining about uh, PlayStation's free internet for a long time. So the fact that they, um, the fact that they buy it uh, now is going to make things better and make it run easier, you know? It's a good step forward, you know, and that's all they count for. And the PlayStation 4 is trying, it realizes that graphical update wasn't enough. It's a great thing, and it's always something gamers expect and makes things easier for the developer to move on in the next gen, but they also include the touchpad, similar to the PS Vita. And I, it's a cool idea. You know, they have the... They have the uh, the motion sensitivity to DualShock 4 that we very pinpoint to where they're pointing it at the screen, and I can imagine that combination between the touchpad, like uh, maybe you uh, have to push a button over here. Let's let's say it's whack a mole, and there's a mole over here. You'll take the controller over here, press it, and that's the hammer. You know, it's just a basic concept idea I can have for that combo, and it'll make an interesting experience. It's all the matter of how you see it. Um, you can be imaginative with this new con with these new controllers coming out, such as the GamePad and the uh, the DualShock 4, and even the Kinect. There's still a lot of unfleshed out things they can work on. The Kinect, a very tricky thing, and you have to have it. So who knows? Maybe developers will use it more. But and that's, I'm sure that's what Microsoft's intending. But it's getting too hairy, you know. That's just my thoughts on it. Um, after all this positive. Uh, attributes and understanding the, of Microsoft's reasoning for the Xbox One, I'm still against the console, because no matter what they do, I, you just can't live in a world, you just can't have a gaming console with so many problems. Um, you can't, you want to be able to play game, games, you want to be able to buy used games, it's just the truth. You want to, you don't want to be forced to check your internet every day, you don't want to, you want to play offline sometimes. It's just these are the things that Microsoft actually aren't addressing. I've seen many interviews that when those questions get asked, they either avoid it, skip it, or they say, "Nope, it's ending here." Or you can be like, uh, I forgot his name, but you all know what I'm talking about. You can be like the guy, "Oh, if you don't have internet, buy a 360." PS4 um, is getting a lot of Microsoft buyers, and I'm sure a lot of people buy it be. I'm sure a lot of people would be uh, satisfied with PS4. I'm pers I'm not getting one. I I only get one next gen console, and it's usually and it's uh it's Nintendo usually. I got a Wii U. That's good enough for me. Um, any other games I'm missing are usually on Steam. That's where I get those. That's just me. Uh, whatever you guys like is fine by me. You know, my friend friend of mine, um, um True Darkness 100 MC, uh, Tyler. Uh, I'm sure you know him if you're watching my channel. Um, he um. He's getting a PS4, and he's very excited about it, and you know, they're like, hey, I get to play too, he's like, yeah. That's how it was back in the day, you know, he's going to come over to my house, we play some Wii U, I'll go over to his house, play some PS4, and you know, it's it's all good fun, you know, it's like, you know what, I think I said this in the console personalities analysis way back in the day, I said, uh, you know what, um, you got you got your thing, I like it, it's fun, but I, this is my thing, and you, you, I'm sure you have fun with it too. Uh, that's just how it is. Uh, I just thought I'd do a follow-up on the two new consoles, because I have been following, because I just wanted to talk more about it. I want to flesh out my thoughts on them, um, be a little more descriptive. Um, I think the Bickering Gamers Xbox One PS4 impressions videos say it all from my standpoint, but now I'm a little more educated on the consoles, so we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching.